Good morning. The plan is to get to Droitwich today, which is about five or six miles away, but there are six wide locks to go through as well. Droitwich, a very historic town, I think originally settled by the Romans because they wanted the salt. It is a spa town. And if I get a chance, I'll do some filming of the High Street, which is all massively subsided from where salt was extracted from underneath the town. It's only six miles or thereabouts to Droitwich, but first I need to go through four more wide locks and this rather hellish looking road underpass. It's only a short bridge really, but it's so dark and ominous you feel as though you're about to descend into the centre of the earth. Needless to say, you don't, but emerge in glorious daylight mere seconds later. For a supposedly wide-beam canal, it does feel very hemmed in by all the undergrowth and overgrowth wombling free. I can see you'd just get two narrow boats past each other here, but if two wide beams were going against each other, it'd be a bit of a jam. Hello, swans. Get out of the way. No, of course not. They're going to play chicken, which is odd since they're swans. There we go, one either side. That's confused them, but that one's fine, and that one's fine. Don't you glare at me. Up to lock three, and somewhere amongst that flora there should be a lock landing, I hope. Indeed there is, so I've hopped off to go and set the lock. This restored canal was reopened in 2010, but it's good to see improvements still being made. Here, this section of towpath is getting a makeover. Speaking of towpaths, it's behind there, not that you can tell. This canal has no places for you to pull in and stop between the mooring I was on earlier and Droitwich itself. It must be a troublesome issue for someone to have bothered putting up this sign on the next lock landing. There's my boat in the distance, moored on that lock landing, while I run forward to get the lock set. Doing so means risking the wrath of the Duck Mafia, all of whom seem to congregate on this particular lock, moving aside as you go, with much indignant quacking. On lock four, take care when emptying, as I was about to find out. The turbulence of the wash is really quite violent, and as I'd only loosely tied the boat to a bollard, led to it straining forward on its leash. Then, when the second paddle was opened, the boat was trying to take off to the other side. I'll let this play in real time so you can see what happened. Here we go. Fear not, it wasn't untying itself, but I should have kept the centre line shorter. Once you're in the locks, there are some beautiful views of Worcestershire to admire as you wait for the chamber to fill. As the gate opened, the splendid sight of another boat coming down, which means the next and final two locks should already be empty for me, so I can go straight in once I've opened the gates. Indeed, so it proved to be, and having opened a gate, I could slide gently in, ideally without banging into the wall. Oops. Rest assured, I didn't hit that other gate, recovering my positioning just in time. There we go. Close, though. I made a note to take more care. From lock five, I can easily see the sixth and final one just ahead. Then it's a brief and gentle chug to the town. Just waiting for the last lock of the six to finish filling. And then I'm out and it's about three, three and a half miles to Droitwich where there is a basin with visitor moorings. And a very scenic little chug it is too. This is a little unnerving, warning of a submerged sill, but with a two foot three inch draught I should be fine if the water levels are nominal as they put it. Yep, all well and on past this church, the sight of which indicates I'm within a stone's throw of the ring road surrounding Droitwich. There it is, the A38 Roman Way. Once I'm through that, I'm in town. 
Another boat. Why do you always meet them on corners? Breathe in. It's not terribly wide here, as it hasn't been for much of the trip. I'll slow down and squish into the side. Now that I'm inside the ring road, the houses of Droitwich are starting to appear on the canal side and through the trees. Positive thinking graffiti. Once I've gone under these rail and road bridges, there's a slightly odd metal tunnel to go through. It's more of a large pipe, really. And then you emerge into the canal basin. This is supposed to be a winding hole, but it's a bit overgrown too. Not quite Bond villain headquarters, is it? And here's Netherwich Basin. You can see all the pontoons directly ahead, which are for visitors, and there's loads of them free, so I can take my pick. This one will do. Gently does it. The pontoons are only half the length of the boat, so a bit awkward to tie tightly up to. You have to use the centre and bow lines. Only one other visitor here so far, it seems. Lots of space for anyone turning up this afternoon. Those ones in the distance are permanent moorings, licensed by the Canal and River Trust. We visitors can only stay 48 hours, which is, I think, a shame. 72 would be better, then you get two full days. That's the water point at the end of the pontoons. It's a shame there's no toilet emptying facility. One other thing about the pontoons. They are very narrow, so as you try to pull the boat in while tying up, don't step back. It would be very easy to put a foot over the edge and fall in. Let's have a quick look round Droitwich. This is Vines Park, through which the canal runs, and it's adjacent to the basin. In the distance, Dodder Hill Church, parts of which date from 1180. This is rather splendid, a narrowboat-themed wooden compass sign thing. There are three swing bridges if you want to continue east on the canal, although one of them is always open. In the middle of the park, this boaty set of benches, which sadly gets vandalised repeatedly by morons. It's a nice place to sit and have an ice cream when it's sunny, and you can learn about the canal restoration too, even if the sign is a bit out of date. At the edge of the park, a lock takes you from the barge canal to the junction canal. That over the road is Waitrose, which for my overseas viewers is an expensive but highly regarded supermarket. Once your town has a Waitrose, it is said you have made it. Back in the park, and this is St Richard, a figure of historic importance in the town. The statue plaques describe what he did, which was to make the brine springs run again after they fell dry, supposedly. He is also vandalised often, unfortunately. There's a little section of the park that commemorates Droitwich's salt history, the town's motto being Sal Sapit Omnia, salt flavours everything. This is a reconstruction of a medieval brine pit, and the signs describe what it's about, so I'll put some of them up now, and you can press pause to read through them. I thought this one was fascinating, about the origin of the word salary. In the ancient High Street, many of the buildings are lopsided, due to subsidence from the salt extraction. I'm standing straight here, but that building is leaning over. And this one's so wonky, it had to be propped up with an extra brick wall. That's it for this vlog. Hope you enjoyed it. Cheerio!